Hello people, I'm the Comic Book Gamer, and today on something new, I'm going to be talking about The Fade Out, which is written by Ed Brubaker, and the art is done by Sean Phillips. Now, this book, I had heard nothing about it, I knew nothing about it, like, it, unlike the other books, which I had seen a bunch of people saying these books are awesome, this book, I heard nothing about it, but it was a new release on Amazon, it just came out on, like, August 1st, I think, well, you know, the trade anyways, and so I was like, okay, it's done by Ed Brubaker, he had a great run on Captain America, and so I was excited for it, and the the cover is awesome. Look at that. The bloody typewriter. It's great. I love it. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be getting into spoilers for this book, so if you haven't read it, beware. I would suggest to go and read it because it is worth the read. But anyways, let's get into it. So one of the things I really love about this book that I think all indie books should do is it gives you a character roster. If you look right here, it tells you these characters. Because, you know, it's an indie book, so obviously you're not familiar with all the characters. So if they mention someone by name, maybe like... Who, who's that again? I know that's happened for me on a couple occasions when reading an indie book, but with this, I was able to just flip back and be like, oh, okay. And so, yeah, this book takes place in the late 40s, and it's a, a really cool, like, a study, sort of, of show business and, like, sort of the darker side of it. And there are a lot of mentions of some old movie stars. I grew up watching a ton of old movies because that's just what my parents showed me. I love Bob Hope. He's my favorite comedian of all, of all time. Like, Son of Pale Face may very well be my favorite comedy. It's great. And, like, you have a ton of different movie stars that are mentioned or you just see pictures of them. Like, Clark, Clark Gable even makes an appearance in this. I thought that was really cool. He's only in it for, like, two seconds. But, yeah... It's really cool seeing all these mentions of these old movie stars that I grew up watching, and I loved seeing that. They just nail the feel of the time setting. Like, everyone's smoking just like they did back then. Like, this, the fashion works. The art is fantastic, by the way. I personally love it. Let me see if I can give you guys some examples of it. It looks great. Like, it really, really fits the, uh... It really fits the t style of the book. I love the art, everything. Like, the way the guy draws everything is just great. But anyways, this book's main character is Charlie Parrish. Like, it, it switches around a lot to different characters, like, giving you different perspectives on things. But Charlie Parrish is definitely the main character. He's a screenwriter for this movie, and uh, he wakes up one day from this, like, wild party. He's remembering things that happened. He's like, okay, what happened? Okay. Remember some stuff. Then he sees lipstick on a mirror, and he's like, what girl was here? What's going on so then he goes into like a bedroom or a living room I don't remember whatever and then he sees his girl just dead strangled and he's like who killed her did I do it no no he kind of immediately rules himself out and he just leaves he's like yep I was never here he he takes like he takes a rag and he wipes everything off his fingerprints is like yep I was never here this lady is dead for some reason and so then he leaves and that is to set it up for the rest of the book it's a murder mystery and it's a good one and uh yeah so throughout the book you're just seeing all these different things being pieced together like he's remembering different stuff because he's blackout drunk and you see a lot of different elements of like what happens in this world. For instance, Charlie's a screenwriter, but he can't write for crap. Like, people think he's a great screenwriter, but it turns out he's had a writer's block for a while now. But he has a buddy who, uh, who like, gets drunk all the time. Like, his wife uh, always calls Charlie and says, please go and bring him home. He's just, he's drunk out of his mind. And so they have a partnership. So ch what happens is Charlie goes and gets the jobs. You know, he gets hired because he's not known as some blackout drunk. And so, yeah, he gets the jobs. He's good at typing. But the other guy is good at writing, but he can't use a typewriter for crap or anything. He's terrible. But he's a good writer. So they have a writer partnership to where Charlie gets his jobs and he types everything, but the other guy actually writes uh, all the script and everything. So that's how that works. I thought that was an interesting concept, seeing that this guy's a well, well-known screenwriter, but he can't actually write and he has to rely on his drunk buddy to do everything. So I thought that was cool. But one day he decides to tell his drunk buddy uh, that, hey, I was there when this girl got killed and it wasn't what they said because the studio tries to cover up her murder and is just like, oh no, she hung herself. You know, oh, what a big deal. She hung herself. It, it really sucks. But, you know, nothing more than that. And so this guy and Charlie are both sweating over the fact that they covered it up and said she hung herself. Like, who killed her? Why did they kill her? What's going on with all this? And so, yeah, they, like, it drives them crazy throughout the book. But anyways, towards the end of the book, we see that Charlie and Earl Rath, who's the male lead on the movie he's writing, go to this place to get some film developed. While they're there, there's a bunch of pictures. Charlie sees one that catches his eye. There's this guy that he's like, I know that guy. Who is he? He asked people. People. No one knows, but later on, Earl tells him that a uh, rumor has it that there is a producer that is an FBI agent on one of the lots, you know, the, on one of the movie sets, and no one knows who he is, but 
rumor is that Reagan's been passing him names of likely commies for him to hunt down. And so from then on, uh, <laughs> that's when Charlie's like, oh crap. And so Charlie goes for a walk. He's walking towards the house. He knows his bad stuff's already gone. He can see the fire trucks. He goes back to where uh, the film was developed because when he told him about Reagan, Earl, when he told him about Reagan, they were at some bar. And he goes back to where the film was developed and he sees that's all burned down. And then he sees that guy that he saw in the picture and that's where it ends. He's like, what have I stumbled onto? I know this was different than my normal Something's New. I decided that instead of making just a super long uh, video telling you every single thing that happens in the story, I would, I would skip over a lot more stuff and sort of give you the gist of it but yeah overall i really love this book and i definitely say it's worth the money it's a short book but i'd say it's worth it it's ten dollars retail i got for five bucks on amazon it's really good it's a great sort of film noir uh book it shows you the dirty side of show business it's a murder mystery which i love and i can't wait for act two because this is just act one and the murder is not solved yet so i'm really excited to see what happens next and it's just it's a very dark world that these movie stars live in and everything you see everything like what what even the screenwriter is the main character it's not some movie star or nothing it's a screenwriter and i thought that was cool so yeah overall Definitely suggest you guys get it if you're interested. If you're even remotely interested in this, definitely get it. The writing's great. It's Ed Brubaker, so of course it's great. The art is fantastic by Sean Phillips, a guy who I'd never even heard of, but he nailed it. He killed it in this book. So yeah, those are my final thoughts on uh, Fade Out. <laughs> I forgot the name of it for a second. But The Fade Out, yeah, it's a great book. It's cheap, and uh, it's an image book, so of course it feels great in your hands. Like all image books, they just, like the feeling of holding an image book, I, it, if you haven't held one, just go and touch an image book. I know that sounds weird, but you know what I mean if you've read it. Like, they feel different than other uh, comics. So, yeah, those are my final thoughts on The Fade Out. It's a great book. Definitely read it. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to be reading next for um, something new. I'll figure something out. But, yeah, see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like.